I may not like pineapple on pizza, but I sure as hell like this pineapple here. Welcome to my crash course for piña. In this video I will tell you about what piña is, how we can manage state with it and how to integrate it into a simple view app. First things first, let's talk about what piña is. Piña is a state management library for Vue.js. It lets us easily share state across our components and pages. For example, if we have a user who is authenticated, we would want to keep the state globally throughout our app. This state can be modified by the so-called actions, which are normal methods that can be later called from our components when we want to change the state. There is also the concept of getters, which as the name implies, are used for reading our state. The place where we keep our state, actions and getters is called a store. If you have used Vuex before, you will notice that in Pina there are no, no longer mutations, which makes it easy for us to modify state directly in our actions. Pina is also modular and encourages us to have different stores for different parts of our logic in our application. That is possible because now stores are in a flat structure. Lastly, Pina has great TypeScript support and auto completion, which makes the development experience quite a lot better. For this tutorial, we will be using Pina to keep the state of our cart. We will have products that the user can add or remove from their cart. Of course, for simpler projects, you might get away with not using Pina, but I think this will be a good way to grasp the basics so that you can then try it out on a project with multiple stores. Let's start by creating our project. I will call it Pina Cart Tutorial and we will use Vit to scaffold it using the View and TypeScript template. Once created, I will cd into the folder and open it in VS Code. I will get rid of the boilerplate and run npm install. I will create a simple navbar that will include the name of our project and the Pina logo. Next, I will create some products to display on the page. By the way, I'm using Tailwind to style these components. Lastly, I will create the cart button on the top right that will expand to show the products in the cart. I will provide the GitHub link so that everybody can clone this and start from here. Next, we will install Pina and create our first store. Let's open the terminal and install it using npm. Once installed, we'll have to register it in our main.ts file. Let's import Pina and register it like this. Now if we open View DevTools, we should be able to see a specific section for Pina. For our application, we will have a product store and also a card store. Let's start by creating a stores folder and then creating product store.ts. Inside the file, let's import define store from Pina and then export a variable called use product store. The define store method will accept two arguments and the first will be its name and the second will hold the state, the actions and the getters. When defining our store, we can use composition API syntax so that refs become state, computed properties become getters and methods become actions. Let's change the product's ref so that it has the three products you saw earlier. Back in app.view, we can see we have our hard-coded array. Let's remove it and get the products from our store. Let's create a new variable called product store, which will be equal to use product store. Now, in order to get the products, let's change it to product store.products. If we go back to view DevTools and go to Pina, we will see that now we have this product store. We can see that it has all of our state and all of our getters. Inside of the stores folder, let's also create the card store.ts. Let's import define store from Pina and create a new store. It will have an array of items of type product and an action add item. Because Pina passes by reference, we need to essentially pass a copy of item. If we have a look at our cart component, we can see that it has an add to cart button, which emits an event. In app.view, we don't handle the event anywhere, so let's do that now. Let's start by importing and using our use cart store in our app.view. We can then listen for the add to cart event and use the store in order to pass in the item. Now if we go to our app and if we go to Pina, we will see that we have the cart store. 
Now if we try to add things into our cart, we can see that they are added into our day items. We can add as many items as we want. However, our cart component is not yet using the store. Back in app.view, we can see that the cart is actually getting the products as a prop. So we can remove them and actually use the store inside of that component. If we go back to our app and try to add multiple apples, we will see that the cart is dynamic, but the apples are added as individual items. Let's fix that. Back in our cart store, let's add another getter. This getter will be able to group the items so that we can later count them. Now if we go back to our application and we go to Pina, we can see our new property here. And if we add our items to our cart, we can see that it actually groups them by their name. In our cart component, we can change it so that from the cart store we get the key and the value. So in this case it will be the name and then the items. We get it by using object entries from the grouped items. We can then display the name. Instead of a hard-coded one, we can use the item's length. For the price, we can use the JavaScript reduce method in order to calculate the total item price for each of the items. Back to our browser, if we open the cart and start adding items, we can see that everything is now dynamic. almost everything because the buttons for changing the quantity are still not functional. In our card store, we have a function for adding an item. Now let's also create a function for removing an item. We can then use them in our card component. For example, we add the remove item on the minus and the add item on the plus. The last thing we're going to add is a small bubble next to our card icon to indicate how many items we have in our cart. We use a relative and absolute to position it correctly and then we use our cart store in order to display the items count. I saw that we have one mistake here. So this is supposed to be a getter and we forgot, forgot to use it as a computed. So let's just add it right now. Going back to our application, we can see that we have the dynamic bubble, which reacts to the items count. The plus and minus buttons now also work, so we can add and remove items. And this was it. Before I go, I want to tell you about a few other tips and tricks. To reset the state of our store, we need to create a reset method. In option stores, this reset method was provided to us, but in composition, we need to create it ourselves. When we use a store in a component, we can actually destructure it to get a certain variable. However, we need to keep in mind to use the helper function store to refs in order to persist the reactivity of the state. One last tip that can be useful for debugging. If we go to DevTools and Timeline and scroll down, we can see this Pina tab. Here we can see mutations that happen in a state. Here we see that we used an action that is wrapping around the mutation. This was all from me. I hope you liked this crash course and like and subscribe for more.